Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to show how to generate centroid data uh, used for pick and place machines when all you have is just Gerber data or any type of unintelligent data uh, related to your printed circuit board. Uh, typically, what happens is a lot of assembly houses uh, end up with just the Gerber file and drill data and no other information, and yet from there they need to be able to extract the components that are used on the board. Uh, also include the reference designators and everything else related to that. Uh, also being able to import a bomb to essentially uh, recreate the information necessary for the pick and place machine. In this tutorial here, what we're going to do is load a set of uh, simple Gerbers, show how to generate uh, the centroid component data. Then also what we're going to do is put it on a panel and on the panel we're going to show how to uh, export an overall centroid data for an entire panel so it's kind of a two-step process here first thing I'll do is I'll just load in my set of uh, particular Gerber files in this case I'll just use this the standard one we use for for demonstrations okay at this point right now FAT3000 is loaded in the Gerber files and I'm pretty much ready to start generating centroids first thing I like to do is turn on the solder path the solder paste layer sorry and that's signified by this color right here is how I'm able to kind of physically tell what's the solder paste and also turn on the silk screen. What I like to do when I have the silk screen on is I like to actually lock the silk screen layer. What that does is it allows me to select everything but the silk screen layer uh, still stays visible but I'm unable to select the silk screen layer. So all we need to do to get started is simply select a group of pads that makes up a component the nice thing about FAB 3000 compared to a lot of other cam tools is there's no need for the pads to be flashed. So FAB 3000 can work perfectly with just plain old flash pads or drawn pads or anything that, that signifies or represents the pad itself. So it saves you an extra step uh, that you may have to do with other types of uh, cam tools. So in any case, going back to here, I'll select Tools. You go to the Components and you'll select Build Component. What it asks you for down here is to say select pin number one. Typically, you just select the location of where the pin number one is. Now, in most cases, this is primarily used just as a reference for, so you can visibly see exactly where the, the component is referenced. Uh, it's not life or death if you select pin number one on the lower left corner, and it should be on top right corner. It's just something that gives you a good reference point uh, for viewing because, again, we're just generating the centroid data, so you'll be able to, to make any changes or modifications along the way. So what FAT3000 does is it creates an auto-generated footprint name. If you want to change this to something more related to what you're looking for, you can simply just click it and type it. What it does is it calculates the pitch, tells you it's on the top side, and this option right here, Apply All, means to go ahead and find all matches uh, that are similar to that, which is the big time saver here, and also to check for overlap. So in case two components seem to be too close to each other where their parts may be overlapping uh, basically it's going to check for that and it will not assign a component if they're going to be overlapping so I press OK and you'll see right here you get a question mark one two question mark there what happened is FAT3000 found all these similar types of components uh, in this case which happened to be four I believe for the top side yep so now let's just repeat the step for the other components here so I'll go ahead and select there and I'll just go back to the tools menu just that way it's easier to see exactly what I'm doing I could right click short cut select pin number one select that it gives me 100 pin pitch is 26 yes I like to apply to all you'll see that it found the match for that component there we'll do the same here tools build component select right there and I'm just kind of hurrying up through this process here. Again, depending on the size of board you have, obviously there'll be more different types of components or less. It just depends. Uh, so I'm going to repeat this last final step. Okay. So what I've done now at this point as I zoom off is this particular one only has eight surface mount components. Again, this is an older board, but it's just to give the, the idea and so you can see exactly how to generate the centroids. What you do is you click here on components. What you'll see here is the reference designator is not assigned. That's why it starts with a question mark. It lets you know that it's on the top side, the rotation, and the footprint. Now, the nice thing is that had the components been rotated, FAB 3000 would detect that. 
and add you know the 90 degree rotation or you know what have you on there so it's a nice feature but you can also go back and make any changes yourself next what we want to do is go ahead and assign the reference designator so I'll click on the first one and since the silk screen's in the background I can see that this is U20 I simply type in here U20 you don't have to worry about capitals or anything because the PAP 8000 will handle the rest verify rotation hit enter and you'll notice that it automatically scrolls to the next component and it also zooms me to that location so this makes it really easy and really quick for me to start assigning all the reference designators so you'll see I'll just go U21 hit enter just go right and type U22 enter U23 enter you can see reference designators up here in the corner U8 so I'll just go back here and type U8 enter U16 enter here's U15 U1 and that's it. Great. All my components have now, the, uh, I've basically assigned the reference designators to them, and I have all the centroid data created. Now it's a matter of simply just going to File, Export, Centroid File, and here I can select if I want the units to be inch, mils, or millimeter, uh, whether or not I only want to generate components for surface mount, if I want the top and bottom side. Uh, also allows you to choose the component rotation. So in general, it uses counterclockwise, and the origin is 3 o'clock. And again, these are all specific, depending on the type of machine that you have as far as importing the, the uh, centroid data. Uh, you can also include the component part number. If you've imported a, the uh, bomb file, you can also include the component pitch, which I'll just add, and the component height. And that's related to if you've imported an ODB++ file or if that's on record on the bomb file, then it will have a height component. I simply select next, choose location where I like to have this centroid, press save, and there you go. I've outputted this centroid data to this particular folder. I'll click output folder, take a look, and there is the centroid file that I have just generated. I'll go ahead and open this up with just a standard Press OK, and then here you go. Now you see I have basically got set it up. So I got the reference designators, the layer side, the top. That main part is the centroid information. It also includes the pitch or anything else that uh, was necessary. Okay, what I'm going to do here now is, is that's great. I've got to this point. Let's say, for instance, now I want to lay this out on a on a panel, and I want to be able to out export the centroid data for an entire panel. I'll just go ahead and turn everything back on. Uh, I'll go to Pad 3000, select New Panel. I'll just use the defaults in this case. I'm not too concerned about the specifics. I just want to show how it works. Uh, so what we'll do here is we'll go to Tools, Merge Job Wizard. This is a real nice and unique fe feature to Fab 3000. What it allows you to do is you can combine multiple boards together all in, uh, and let Fab 3000 do the rest. In this case, I'm just going to quickly enter some settings. The minimum count means the minimum number of boards that can fit on the panel. The surplus means how many additional, with all the extra space, how many additional boards can I fit on the panel? So usually just by entering like the minimum count of something low and then putting high surplus, so Fab 3000 will try its best to put as many boards as it can at a minimum of two and as many that will fit for the rest of the, the panel. I click button next. You can also include scoring lines, outline layer, other information such as that. You could also use search for smallest panel. What that does is you put the required number of boards that you have, click search for smallest panel, and FAT3000 will try to create the smallest panel possible that includes the required number of boards. It will ignore the surplus in this case. Uh, and so here you go. Basically what it's done is it's laid out all the different ways that it could compress and put the board in there. I'll use the awkward shape right here just to kind of make a point. So now you see here that if I zoom in, let me just turn back on the paste layer, the components, and uh, the sill screen. You'll see that it actually, the rotations all take place here. So it's a real nice feature to have. Uh, so even if your boards are rotated in the panel, the centroid file will, the centroid information gets rotated also. So it keeps everything nice and concise. The only thing I have to do here before exporting the centroid <clears throat> is I have to use the one particular feature here called flatten job hierarchy. And this is something I can undo right after. What this does is Fab3000 uses a hierarchy to nest 
components or boards into the actual panel. By flattening it, now when I move it over, it's basically I'm moving right over the actual components. And if I undo, then I'll go right back to having exactly uh, cells for each one of those particular boards. In any case, now let me go ahead and go to File, Export, and I'll re-export that centroid information. Now I'm going to have the centroid information for the entire panel. So I'll just use the same settings. Uh, I guess this is panel, but I'll call this centroid panel. Hit save. Go to the output folder. Here's my file I just outputted. Let's hit open. Use all the defaults. And again, it generates a comma separated uh, file, which is pretty much compatible with everything. And there you go. Now you've got all the centroid information. You see you've got the rotated components. Um, and everything else of that nature. So you're pretty much have done just about everything required to start with a set of Gerber files, generate centroid data, export centroid data, create a panel, and then re-export if necessary. So now that I've got all the centroid data for an entire panel. Thank you very much.